Have you ever wondered what it takes to capture the breathtaking beauty of the Wonder What world on camera? Do you want to upgrade your action camera setup to capture professional images without breaking the bank? Well, you are in for a treat today as we dive deep into the heart of my underwater videography gear and explore what helps me to bring magic to screens. After years shooting with a GoPro, I upgraded my setup to more advanced underwater video gear. And I'm excited to share with you the tools and customizations I use. So without further ado, let's dive into it. All right, let's kick things off with a quick question that's been bubbling in my mind since I first started to dive. How do we capture the beauty of the underwater world and share it with the world without breaking the bank? My trust companion on every dive is the Panasonic GH5 Mark II camera. The GH5 Mark II is over two years old camera released in June 2021. So why would I choose this camera? Well, I did a lot of research and this camera was one of the best compromise between video and photo in the market, even after a couple of years. This powerhouse of a camera offers stunning 4K quality in 6 frames per second, allowing me to capture every detail of this awe-inspiring moment. But I can go as high as 108 frames per second at 10 HP if I need to create a more slow motion style in post-processing. So that's really a fantastic feature. The reason to get this was a flip screen. Not that it makes any difference in the water, but on land that I use a lot as well, it makes a big difference. And price wise, it's not that bad. I will put the link below this video, but you can pick it up for a reasonable price because it's a couple of years old camera. When we speak of camera, we must talk about lenses. To keep the price down, I went for a package lens, a Panasonic Leica lens 12 to 60, a little bit wide angle, which is great for underwater, but I can capture close up shots, ensuring no critter goes unnoticed. And with an f2.8, it makes a great lens for the price. This pair have a good outfox and image stabilization as well, allowing them to make excellent quality images underwater and on land. Of course, keeping my gear safe and dry is essential. That's why I rely on the Sea Frogs underwater camera housing for my Panasonic GH5. This housing is controversial because it's a lot cheaper, Chinese, and made from plastic. It doesn't feel a very cheap material to me, but it is plastic, so I need to take extra care. I could have gone to Ike Light or Nautical housings, except they cost more than the camera. This house is my camera's second home underwater, shielding it from the elements while allowing me to control most of its functions. To be honest, I'd say full control. The main downside of this house is that there is no manual focus or manual zoom which is a compromise. Nonetheless, I can work with the auto folks and prepare the zoom before entering the water. But I need to know exactly what I want to capture as I cannot change it once the camera is in the housing. If you are enjoying this video or getting any value from it, don't forget to like so other people can also learn from it. And speak of capturing, let's talk about the dome port. The Seafrog 6-inch dry dome port adds a creative twist to my shots. It allows me to capture those awesome shots that are half under and half over the water and help with the field of view. It's like picking through a porthole into a whole new dimension. And of course, because the dome is made from acrylic, it's very prone to scratching and you want to watch out and protect it as much as possible. Now, moving to stability, you may wonder, how I keep my shots steady? Well, it's all about finding balance, literally. The Seafrog aluminum tray grip provides the stability I need for smooth footage, giving me the confidence to capture those magical moments without the shakes. But not everything is about stability, you know. We need light to have great shots. A natural light can be a bit shy sometimes. 
especially in the depths. That's where the Trustfire DF50 video light comes in. With its adjustable brightness and wide beam angle, it's like having a pocketed size sun that ensures our subject shines in all their glory. And hey, if you're itching to watch my long-term review of the Trustfire DF50, check out my video. I will leave the link in the description below. But when using lights, the whole package will be heavy and will affect the gear points. If you have enjoyed this video so far and like content like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And speaking of buoyance, having a correct trim and neutral buoyance gear elevates the quality of my footage. However, achieving that perfect balance in the underwater world is not that simple and requires loads of trial and errors. I've integrated an 8-inch carbon fiber floating arm into my setup allowing me to fine-tune the camera system buoyance and maintain steady shots effortlessly. This lightweight marvel allows the camera system to glide through the water gracefully, giving my shots that cinematic fluidity I love. However, achieving optimal trim isn't just about off-the-shelf solutions. Because the dome port adds loads of air into the front of the camera system, I created something like the Ike Light Trim Weight System to let me adjust the trim of the camera with precision, ensuring it stays perfectly level. The whole setup feels pretty ergonomic, however, I can really reach the trigger while holding the tray. To use the trigger, I needed to use my left hand without holding the tray as it was too far to reach. To mitigate this issue, I purchased a trigger extension that, of course, did not fit correctly, so I created this 3D base for the arm. Now, the trigger extension allows me to start and stop a shot without letting go of the tray and have a steady shot since the first frame. So before I wrap up, it's important to highlight that this gear setup offers remarkable value compared to other alternatives available in the market. To put into perspective, my total investment for this setup has been under £2,000. In contrast, alternative choices would have demanded an expenditure exceeding £10,000. The best part? This cost-effective approach does in any way compromise the exceptional quality of the image I capture. So there you have it, folks. The underwater videography gear that becomes an extension of my very being as explored in the water world. It's more than just equipment. It's a window to a world that's as captivating as it's fragile. If you enjoyed this behind the scenes look at my underwater videography gear, don't forget to comment what you think about my gear and what gear do you use. See you in the next video and until then, keep diving and keep capturing the wonders that lie beneath the surface. And if you don't know more about the gear I use when I'm doing videography, Check out this video that will going to give you an idea of the gear I use.